Okay. <sighs> okay, so I was standing in the shower like five minutes ago and I just like got a feeling to make this video. And I mean, wanted to make the, I was hoping I was gonna be able to make this video every year. And then every year I fail. Uh, and I guess by the title, you might have a hint to what it is. But I think this will answer the most question, most quested question. And that question is why did I stop climbing? Why did I take that decision? What happened? Why well, I was injured? I guess we should answer that question. But I think we all, to be able to answer that question, because it kind of it kind of defines who I am as well, the backstory of it all. I actually, we actually need to go back to the very beginning. So yeah, I guess I guess we should get started. So I grew up in a small town in Sweden, very far away from Stockholm. Um, it's very close to to Norway actually. Um, so I'm pretty much like a redneck of Sweden. I don't think you can get more redneck than me. Uh, maybe I'm not as much redneck at the moment when, but when I grew up, I was, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Li I was like, life was really good for me when I was a kid. You know, we grew up in a small town, so we could just go swim, fishing. It's like the, the ideal scenario as growing up as a kid. And as you might have noticed, we in the photos, my ears are still really big for being a kid but they actually might be standing out more. They kind of, uh, how do you say it? Like, yeah, they just stick out a lot compared to what my ears do now. Because I've seen the comment section, it's not a bad thing, uh, but people are like, oh, Eric has really big ears, or they look like elf ears, um, that whole shebang, which is fine. But yeah, the kids were really mean back in the days. So they actually called me Dumbo for having so big ears. And like, it got really bad, so my mom actually went to the doctor and they got my ears fixed, or like they stitched it to my head. Um, and that kind of started how I felt in school. Uh, and school was really hard time for me, I was really insecure, and the bullying made me even more insecure. So I struggled really in school. And I think, just to emphasize the school time for me, it's like I love to tell this story, because I think it's, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of sad, but it's also kind of funny. I, I can look at it now, because now I am who I am. So in school, in class, you always have like the people that are really good and then you have the people that are like you know the normal people they get the average grade and then you have bad people and that's like the the genres of people you have in school i was the only one in my class and i also think only one in my school that didn't actually go in didn't fit into any of those stereotypes or group fits uh, each week we would learn 10 english words and i think we were like seven or eight here and that was like entire class entire school pretty much like okay you're gonna learn try to learn 10 english words so bear in mind, like there were people that was like, you know, really bad at school. They still got, they still had the pressure on them to learn 10 words. Uh, whereas I only had to learn five, you know, because they kind of pitied me. They did like, oh, well, Eric is kind of like a lost call. It's unfair to give him, you know, 10 words to learn. He doesn't have the brain power to learn 10. <laughs> so it's kind of brutal, but it's not a sob story either. It's just you know, that's how life is sometimes. So that was kind of like my entire school year up to like when I was 15. It was just like a misfit, didn't fit anywhere, very insecure, like school was not a fun thing. And then when I was 15, I moved to a bigger town and that's located in Karlstad. It's like an hour away from where I originally lived. And there I started a new school, a new, completely new slate, uh, I was going to study painting and, you know, to be a painter the rest of my life. Just be able to make a fast income instantly after I graduate. I didn't enjoy it at all. Because I had a few friends at least back where I lived. Now I have nothing. Um, so then I kind of like found my escape in computer games. I never really played computer games before that. So I started playing World of Warcraft. And I know a lot of you actually have played it as well. I've seen it in the comment section. And naturally, I was really bad at that game too, but I enjoyed it either way. So I'm like, okay, I'll just play the game and put in the hours. And slowly but surely, I became better and better at the game. So like one year into the game, I was pretty decent. And that was the first time in my life when I was like decent at something. And at that point, I was like, I had this thing where I told myself, like, I'm going to be the best player in the world. And I didn't really know what that meant. I think it was like four or five million people who played that game. Uh, I didn't really think about it so much. It was just a feeling like I'm gonna be the best. I'm gonna put in the work and just do it. And I was psyched. Uh, that was the first time in my life where I like told myself something like that. So I did the bare minimum in school 
and just played like 12 hours a day and ate like, you know, like ate like terrible. I think I counted back at like 6,000 calories a day and I didn't gain a kilo. So that was kind of, you know, I was very much a stereotypical gamer, like super skinny, played 12 hours of World of Warcraft a day. And that was like, that was the only thing I did. So then after three years, um, and for the people that have played World of Warcraft, and kind of knows that this works. So we are in season three, it's called. Um, it's like, it's each season is like football. You meet different teams, uh, you go against each other, and if you win, you get points. So how to kind of estimate if you would be the best player in the world, or on some level try to find it, you would have one of the highest ranked team in the world, like worldwide. So the more games obviously you win, the more rating you gain. And if you lose, you lose quite a lot. So it's a high stakes. And I loved it. Because it's uh, you were we were three people in our team playing against three other people. And it's kind of like playing like chess. But like really fast. Like you have to make sure like if I press this skill, this button, that other person is gonna press those things. And then when I, he presses those things, then I'm gonna do these things. So it's just continued. So can I be 30 steps ahead of the other person? It was very intellectually stimulating to be like, okay, I can see in the future, I can read your your strategy, I can do, you do these moves, I do these moves. Um, and uh, that was the first time I was really good at something. Um, so in season three, we played really hard, put as little time into school as possible, and we actually, our team reached the highest point in the world. So at that point in time in season three, we were the best players in the world out of a couple of million playing. That was like an incredible feeling. And I would put three years, four years into it and like 12 hours a day to do it, sacrifice a lot of things, nearly all things. Um, and I absolutely loved it. It's like one of my proudest moments in life and my most cherished memory. But then when I reached that goal, I just quit. I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm done, with I reached my goal, I graduated from school. Now I'll just, I don't know, go through life and find something else. Cause that's before, wow, I didn't have any goal in my life. And I just like kind of, the first time in a couple of years, I'm like, okay, I'm goalless. I don't really be believe in that I need to go to university to become something. I was kind of like, I'll just walk through life until I find something that grabs me and then I'll just be the best in that. Cause then I was kind of cocky, you know, I was like very, well, one of the best players in the world in that game. And I've proven to myself and that I was capable in my, my eyes of anything. So I kind of went through life, did the normal kind of traveling, did as many shitty jobs as possible. I was like a gardener in Australia, which is really, really, really fucking terrifying. Cause you, yeah, you, <laughs> we're gonna have a podcast about that. Uh, but yeah, it was, I did a lot of hard, shitty jobs that I didn't enjoy. That I, so I could try find something that I did enjoy. Uh, met some climbers and I started climbing and uh, I was like instantly obsessed. It was like, it was like World of Warcraft all over again, but it was like 10 years later. So I was around 24, 25 when I started climbing. And before that, I've never trained in my life before. So I did construction, you know, but I wouldn't say I was generally fit. I walked in a climbing gym and I'm like, ah, this is gonna be easy, I'm strong. But I struggled on five A's like everyone else. But I absolutely loved it. And then it clicked, like I'm gonna go all in now. I remember telling my friend, I'm like, I'm gonna be the best climber in Sweden in one year, like believe me. Back then I didn't know that you actually rely on fingers that much and tendons and it doesn't go that fast to get that strong. Um, but yeah, I, as I said, like I've said it many times, I just absolutely loved it. And I didn't know about nutrition either. So I was like, okay, a climber should be light and it should be strong. So I just like, I'll eat, you know, I'll eat some amount that I think it's good. And then I just trained really hard. So then I started training for five hours, five days a week. And just like ate protein, no fat, carbohydrates. I know my go-to meals were like brown rice and shrimps, that's it. <clears throat> and my body felt okay within like the first half year. But then slowly and behold, I started getting really sick. And I was like, why am I getting sick? And it's like, oh, I'm just unlucky. I'll just continue doing what I'm doing. I made really good progress the first years, even though I was a bit sick. And you know, I had these injuries all the time that most beginners have, you know, pulleys here and there. So went really hard for a year, got quite strong for climbing a year. I actually think I have some photos here from when I have climbed one year that I found on my Facebook. Um, very bro-y photos. There are gonna be more bro-y photos and videos in this video. 
But this is here you can see how kind of how I looked. And my whole kind of goal in climbing was that I'm gonna be the like the best, but also like more emphasis on the strongest. Like I only cared about power. So I went into my second year, and then I set goals. Pretty much like okay, I'm gonna before I climb two years, I'm gonna be able to hang on the six millimeters beast maker, uh, six millimeters transgression board. Uh, it's like very sharp board, and six millimeters really really hard. It's like so. Two years, six millimeters. I'm gonna do one five eight on the canvas board. I'm gonna do five one arm pull ups. That was my goal. And like, and then we also had a grading system where we had like colors. So silver color was the hardest in the gym. I think that's around like seven B plus seven C now maybe. I was like, okay, that is also before I climb two years, I'm gonna do that as well. So I was kind of packed out. So then I was like, okay, I need to get lighter, stronger, better. So then I started eating less, training on even harder. And once again, I didn't know. Like I, I read up on nutrition, I just took it way too far, like I usually do. Uh, and I started to get really sick, really, really sick all the time. So that year I was sick for seven months straight. And then it came to my breaking point uh, where I actually got this, this, I wouldn't say disease, but I got this sickness that only like really old people get. They're really sick when their immune system is so bad that it can't handle any more sickness at all. There are many words for it. It's like the shingles, I think it's called in English. There are also like one word I really like, <laughs> which is hellfire, which I think is quite accurate because it feels like your nervous system attacking itself. So you're pretty much like getting burn wounds on you. Like it's like, it's like you're burning. Um, and like really old people die from it. And it's just, it's not pretty. Maybe I should put, it, put in some photos here just so you can see it. But like, yeah, be cautious. Okay, so this is kind of how the hellfire looks. Um, yeah, it's not good. And uh, yeah, I still have scars from it to this day. Yeah, I met a doctor and she's like, well, you have to eat more. Like you've completely, like your body is used to ten, a thousand calories a day and you train five hours, five times a week. Like you you need to eat more. Otherwise, you, you, know, you don't know what will happen. Uh, so it's kind of a wake up call. Uh, so then I started eating more, started to feel a bit better. And then eventually, you know, like it's closing in on two years. So I trained really hard, uh, even though with all those circumstances. Uh, and I did reach my goals. Like I did be actually somehow manage to be able to uh, reach my hang six uh, centimeters, do the one, five, eight and the, the pull ups. But I was like really lean. Uh, I should put it in, I should put in the video of that right now, actually. So you can see, so the, uh, the first video slash print screen here is like when I was the leanest. I think it was like 60 kilos. And I'm 178 and I think I'm 70 kilos now. So it's 10 kilo difference. Um, and that was like the lightest I've ever been. And, and in this video here where I'm goofing around, I'm like here I'm, I'm in a better kind of more sustainable shape. But then it kind of became the same thing as when I reached my goal in World of Warcraft. I kind of like started questioning everything because I'm I reached a goal in climbing. Those goals I've set up for myself over those nearly two years. And I'm like, is this, is this what climbing's all about? I'm like, to suffer this much, do all this shit, like, I've, I'm like, fuck climbing. Like, this, this sucks. I kind of blame climbing for my own, you know, Eric mentality. It's this crazy, dedicated person, you know. All. So I stopped climbing um, for four months and just, you know, played games instead. And that was also about around that time where I'm like, man, I should start doing some YouTube videos because uh, I've been thinking about it for many years. Um, and I, at that time I also had an injury. So I was like, oh, I'll just start a YouTube video and I stopped climbing um, and just play computer games. And then when I started one video a day, which was like three or four years ago, I then stopped training completely because I knew I was working full time and making one video a day. So I, you know, I didn't have time to train. So the first year I didn't really train at all. And then when I stopped working at Kletzenten and did the channel full time, I had all the possibilities in the world to, to you know, pick up climbing again and training again. But at that time I was like, you know, when you, you're so far behind what you usually were and climbing for me was still kind of, uh, most days I kind of hated climbing and I, some days maybe I enjoyed it. So it was in terms of me, like I didn't see it as a good investment. Because I was like, I had enough stress with like doing the YouTube channel and trying to find money and work. So it's like, should I add fuel to the fire with climbing that I might get really, you know, disappointed. 
that's why I think I've tried to make this. I was I tried slash hope to have made this video every year when I start a new year. I'm like, okay, this year it's gonna be year when I start climbing again. Like this year is gonna be the year when I love climbing. And then it never really turns out to that. Uh, but it's also like a big thing. It's like made nearly 700 videos and, and I've been in like maybe 20 or 30 in them, like solo episodes over four years. Like I felt like I didn't, I didn't feel comfortable in front of the camera anymore. Um, and I didn't know if people would actually enjoy me being in front of the camera, you know, like I know it's my channel, but it's like, you know, it's more people I think, and it might be wrong, it might be silly. Most people would want to see more videos with Thor or Emil or Nicken before you want to see videos with me. So that combined with hitting climbing has made it really easy to like, well, I won't be in the videos. And I also felt like I had to live up to some expectations, like maybe Eric is the adult one and he's this person, he's this kind of way, he shares only serious stuff and uh, you know, that's who I am. But I think most of the time I just want to, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty silly person. Like I, the, the, as little time as possible that I can be an adult, I'll take it. Like if I can be childish at nature and just don't think about a lot of like important adult things and just have a good time in a moment, I'd rather be that. So I think it felt like I didn't feel like I could be myself in front of the camera because I'm like, who sh should I portray the serious Eric or should I, you know, just take the, the step out and be myself and might, you know, get the people might get disappointed because they don't they feel maybe that I'm fake even though I'm honest because they have this idea of who I am it's uh thing that all like yeah I don't, it's time to start it sounds really shit like cheesy but it's time to like start dreaming again and, and try things so the dreams for me the next couple of years is like okay I want to climb 8a I want to get strong enough so I can climb with Emil and Nicken and everyone at Balding Bobat and Louis and you know just be able to share those things again and now why I'm sitting here is kind of like I had like okay I need this year I'm feeling it this year I'm like more psyched more like I don't hate climbing as much anymore now and that's very different compared to all like all other years so I think that's why I can make this video so I'm psyched I'm psyched in 2020 it's gonna be more videos with me and them uh, and it felt good to get this off my chest because I've tried to make this video for four months and then those four months has also been prior like three four years um, So yeah felt good to share I don't think I say it enough But I'm super grateful that you all watch it and I'm really grateful to everyone over at patreon to you know To believe in me and do all those things and um, yeah, I'm just really grateful but yeah um, Have a good day, and I'll see you soon